Howdy everybody. Welcome to a video I thought I'd never make, but today I'm going to be talking about working out of the van while out on the road, and more specifically, my quest for a functional yet minimal dual monitor setup like you see right here. Now, I've always tried to keep my work and my play separate, but I had to have knee surgery a couple months ago, and I knew this would greatly impact how I recreate and like what we do on our weekends. Prior to surgery, if we went somewhere, it had a purpose, you know, go someplace cool, get out and do something. But I knew after the surgery, I'd be sitting on my ass a lot. It's kind of like what I need to do, I need to rest to make my recovery as short as possible. So I thought if I'm gonna be sitting around, staring at a monitor, I might as well try to do it out of the van here instead of doing it at home. So the weekends now consist of me like dropping my girlfriend off at like some cool trailhead. And while she's off doing something exciting, I sit here and try to you know feel a little less like I'm going crazy by trying to do something on the computer to feel productive. For the last 15 years or so, I've become extremely reliant and just like dependent on dual monitors. If it's a simple task like writing an email or like typing a Word document, sure, I can get away with doing that on just my laptop. But for anything more complicated, maybe like researching or designing something or editing like the video you're watching right now, I am just extremely dependent on dual monitors to feel like I'm being productive. To the point that even before I had the surgery, when I had the idea that I wanted to try to work out of the van, I immediately started planning, how can I get dual monitors in a functional way in the van here? The goal and priority was to try to come up with like the most streamlined and least intrusive setup possible. I wanted it to be completely out of sight and out of mind when I wasn't like working. And then when I did have some time, I wanted it to be nice and quick to deploy. And all of this is kind of set against a long-term backdrop that one day I should be healthy again. And at that point I'll return to just like trying to get out in the mountains and trying to ignore like all responsibility and work. So I don't want to make like any permanent changes to the van, meaning I can just leave all my work stuff at home and totally ignore this. So let me go over the setup that you see here. And after that, we'll dive into the weeds a little bit, talk about a few things you might find helpful in case you want to try to replicate this setup or just do something similar in your camper or van. And probably the best way to do that is for me to pack all this up and then I'll take you step by step through the whole setup process and all the little bits and pieces of it. Now everything is contained in two bags or cases. The first is this padded laptop sleeve. These are pretty common in the little pocket. I have everything I need to just work on my laptop, a mouse, a little external hard drive, and a wall adapter and power cable. But when I wanna get some real work done, I grab the second case that houses the monitor, as well as a few items that are needed to set it up. Inside, I've got the mount, my headphones, as well as this little pouch with a few doodads we'll shortly cover, and underneath this foam insert is the actual monitor. Back when I purchased this monitor, I had all sorts of like more complicated ideas about how to make this work, mostly revolving maybe around like a folding top to this lagoon table that would kind of hold the monitor, but once I played around with this mount, I knew this was like a far simpler and like perfectly functional solution for what I needed. To mount the monitor, this little bracket just clamps onto any like tabletop. You just screw this tight. And then the monitor just clicks in like so. Simple as can be. This is the Asus ZenScreen 24 inch. It's specifically designed as like a portable travel monitor. So it's nice and thin. That said, it doesn't come with the travel case. And as you can see right here, I scratched it the very first weekend I took it out. 24 inch cases like this one aren't super popular. There's not that many options out there, but this case seemed to be kind of the ideal mix of not too expensive, um, fairly robust. Like I think it protects the monitor just fine. And it had enough like extra thickness in here to house like that mounting bracket and all the extra little things I needed. So I think this case is actually fantastic for this application. Coming back to this case, not much to say about these headphones. The earpieces just rotate. So they store nice and flat. I'm not an audiophile, but they sound great to my ears. And that just leaves this little sleeve that contains the couple cables, as well as my wireless mics to record these videos. Now, this is the part of the setup that I think is sort of like the make or break, whether you're actually ever gonna do this, whether you're gonna pull out that second monitor to actually be more productive. Because if it feels like a big clunky chore, it just becomes one of those things that just doesn't get done. So I did quite a bit of thinking to try to make this as streamlined as possible. And I've gotten to the point where all I need is just two cables to power both the laptop and monitor, as well as transfer the data between them. The first cable is this USB-C to USB-C cable that came with the monitor. On the side of the monitor here, you've got a port that not only can like accept the video signal, it can also like pass through charging to either charge or power a device. So that is what this cable does. It simultaneously gets like the video signal from the laptop as well as charging the laptop, kind of a two-way street. So that's the first cable I use. So we just plug that in between the monitor and the laptop. 
So that just leaves this other cable. And obviously the only function left that we kind of need to fulfill is to power the monitor so that it can then keep the laptop powered as well. Now, if you buy this monitor, it's gonna come with this big bulky charging brick that has two cables coming off of it, kind of a rat's nest. So the obvious advantage of this is just much less of a tangled mess. But the other advantage by using this is I don't have to run my inverter every single time I wanna use this. This thing plugs into a regular household outlet, but this kind of irks the like efficiency side of my brain. This is essentially taking like the 12 volts from the battery bank, then the inverter is gonna bump that up to 120 volts AC, and then this brick bumps that back down to 19 volts DC. By using this cable and this USB outlet I have up here, we're just basically doing a single DC to DC voltage conversion, taking the 12 volts from the battery bank up to the 20 volts of the USB-C outlet. Now, not any USB-C outlet is gonna be able to do this. In fact, almost any cheap option out there will not be able to do this. This Cool Gear model with the 99 watt output, it is the only direct to 12 volt that then can bump up to 20 volt output USB-C outlet I could find. It was a little pricey when I was building the van, but for applications like this, it basically lets me eliminate having to use my inverter. So I totally think it was a worthwhile investment. Now, if you read this power brick, it has a 19 volt output and a 90 watt capacity. If you read the internet specs for this monitor though, it only consumes 13 watts. So if you're not sure if you can power this through the USB ports in your specific setup, I would just try it. I think if they don't have the capacity, I don't think you're gonna do any harm. That said, I think the reason this has 90 watts of output is to basically allow for that pass-through charging. So if you have a lower output, there may be a situation where you can just power the monitor, but you can't do the pass-through charging. So again, I can't recommend this little cool gear charger enough if you're setting up your van. I just think USB-C powered devices are kind of the way a lot of things are going. So I'm really happy I made that investment when I first put all of this together. Now, if you have a monitor like this already, or maybe you've just been paying careful attention, you may have noticed that the power input on this monitor looks like this. It's not USB-C. So in order to be able to power this monitor off of USB-C, you can buy a little adapter like this. It essentially has a USB-C input and then the proper kind of barrel jack output. And that essentially lets you use a USB-C cable to power this monitor. That's a nifty little trick you can do. This, as far as I can envision, is like the minimum number of cables you need to power a setup like this. That said, if you don't have a USB port with the proper output and are going to be using this charging brick, there are things you can do to make this a bit less of a rat's nest. For instance, I think the reason this is so prone to getting tangled is because it's like a center brick with a cable coming off each side. But a little trick that I've learned, if you've got like one of these cables and they unplug, and you can buy a little adapter like this that essentially eliminates the cable. It just makes it like a little power brick that plugs into the wall. You've just got one cable coming off of it, so it's much less likely to get tangled. Now, this adapter works specifically for this power plug, but this isn't going to work in every application. A couple things to consider. Some power bricks, the shape of them, there's just no way you're going to be able to plug this into the wall. It just doesn't have the right shape for it. As well as there's a few different standards for these kind of power outlets here. If you want to try to consider this for a setup you've got and you've got a different charging brick, I think a good like first Google search term is IEC 60320 standards. It will show you a whole bunch of different kind of outlet styles that's been standardized. So then you can just find whatever side you need here. And then you can just use the NEMA, what is this, NEMA 515 plug that's like the standard household outlet. So you can find an adapter that's going to work for you. Now, if this amount of cable refinement seems a little excessive, I'm not too surprised. I really wanted to make this as refined as possible, but there are like simpler things you can do. You know, even using like a little power strip like this, I've thrown this in the van because I thought there's a chance I'll be like sitting in my camp chair one day with my feet kicked up, you know, working on my laptop. That hasn't actually happened, but it just keeps kicking around here. This though, if you're gonna use this in your van, has a couple AC outlets as well as like four USB outlets. So if you have a big rat's nest or several cables going to kind of like your work area, this can just help kind of contain it all. And that just kind of brings me to what I would say is like my best and maybe cheapest advice out of all of this, which is just to like remove the excess and just like separate out the cables you truly need to use. You know, in this extra little pouch I have in the van, I keep like this thing. I've thrown this charging brick in there in case I need to use my inverter or in case I need to use that for some reason. I've got like another cable in here. Um, which I use to like charge my mouse because that uses like that special Mac plug every once in a while. So I've got a little cable in here for that. But I keep all of this separate. I think when I reach for this thing inside my work case, it just has the two cables I need. And that really just helps me not feel like I'm just picking through all these tangled cables every single time, which really helps to just make this feel nice and organized.
Now that was a little more cable talk than I originally thought I'd have to say, but let me just quickly touch on monitor arrangement as we like close out this video. Every time I've ever had dual monitors before, whether that's like in my shop now or way back when I had a cubicle, I had them placed horizontally. That's how I still have them in my shop. But in the van, I decided to go with this vertical setup. I first tried to run this horizontally, but it was just like this giant long lever arm that made my lagoon mount like even more wobbly. The mount I've got on the side of my like uh, seat pedestal right now, it needs a little bit of strengthening. It's something I made myself in like a quick afternoon. But this being just kind of like a straight down load onto the tabletop, much less of a wobbly mess as well. Like when I want to get up and do something, I can pivot this out of the way and like the footprint of this table hasn't grown. So I can just get up and do something and then I can tuck this out of the way like so and like do other things in the van. It doesn't take up a bunch of space around here. It doesn't feel very obtrusive in the van. And that was pretty important to me. So this vertical arrangement, it did take me just a little bit of time to get used to, but now it just feels pretty intuitive. This helped me a lot. I'd recommend you try the vertical arrangement if you're kind of space limited in your van as well. So that's my dual monitor setup that I've been using here for the last like six or seven weekends to try to feel a little productive while I'm kind of in this GIMP mode right now where I can't really recreate very much. I know with my personality, if pulling the second monitor out was like a cumbersome and kind of clunky process, I just wouldn't do it. I just like don't enjoy processes like that. So I knew for me to actually pull this out to be more productive, I was gonna have to kind of streamline it. That's for my personality. Anyways, if you are looking for a second monitor, I think this Asus Zen screen model, I was surprised how well it was thought out, especially with like that easy to use mounting arm. I think it's a really good product. It's not the cheapest option out there, but Asus is like actually a reputable brand versus some kind of like that knockoff, no name Chinese garbage out there. So hope you found something useful in there and uh, hopefully this will help you be more productive if you're trying to work out of your van as well. Thanks everybody. Whoops, one last thing I forgot to say here. If you buy this monitor mount, you may notice yours is longer here. This stem is a little longer. And I kind of cut the excess off and shortened this because I don't need capacity for like a four inch thick tabletop. This is three quarters inches right now. So I got plenty of buffer for anything I've got in the camper van. That said, I wouldn't recommend cutting all this down. Shortening this stem is a little more complicated than it looks based on like how these two things kind of bolt together. Now I did that because originally I was trying to house this mount in a different case. So I needed this thing to just be a little shorter to fit in there. At the end, I ended up buying that other case and I don't think I would have needed to shorten it. So that was a little bit of an extra step I took, but in case you did buy this monitor and you noticed yours A isn't cut metal here and looks a little nicer, that's the reason mine looks a little odd. Okay, bye-bye.